Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. I am currently working on a video about forthcoming commentaries that will be published later in 2023, but I'm not quite done with it yet. I'm still waiting on some information. And so I thought in the meantime, I would show you some new releases I've got. Uh, the two of them are Bible commentaries that I have received since my last video. And 10 are in the category of either biblical studies or theology that I've got in the last, I would say, probably about 12 months, maybe a summer, a few older than that, but definitely since I last did a video on that topic. So let's start out with the commentaries. This one I got in the mail yesterday. So I, it is available. I think it's actually a, a few months old now, but it's obviously the Isaiah volume in the Baker commentary on the Old Testament prophetic books. So for a long time, this series, the Baker Commentary in the Old Testament series, uh, was just uh, wisdom literature. And they're, they're very, very well reviewed. And in the last few years, more volumes have come out on other books. So John Golden Gay wrote Genesis, for example, and Joshua, which is in my last video. And this is the Isaiah volume. And uh, it's going to be mid-level, like the rest of the series. The intended audience is, is pastors and, and teachers. It's almost 800 pages in length, and the author is J. Corden McConville. Now, if you follow the world of Bible commentaries, that name might sound a little bit familiar to you. I uh, have here, off, off the camera here, I have two of his other really well-reviewed commentaries. This is First and Second Chronicles in the Daily Study Bible series. And this is from uh, Westminster John Knox Press. And then another well-reviewed commentary that he has written is the Deuteronomy volume in the Apollos Old Testament commentary. And that's in the IVP. Uh, that's from the IVP publisher. So, like I said, I got this yesterday in the mail. I have not, I have not read it yet. Um, but um, it great series, great author, so I'm expecting it to be a great book. Uh, J. Gordon McConville, if you're not familiar with him, well, I showed you two commentaries he wrote, but he is now Professor Emeritus of Old Testament Theology at the University of, oh boy, Gloucestershire. Is that how I say it? I don't know. Someone could probably correct me in the comments. Uh, that's what I'm going with. University of Gloucestershire. It looks like Gloucestershire, but I'm guessing that that's not correct. So, uh, okay. So that's the first one. Isaiah. The next one is the latest replacement in the NICOT series on three minor prophets, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah. And the author is James, James D. Nogalski. So I don't think I showed this in my last video. Now I'm, now I'm wondering if I did. Maybe I did. Um, he is the director of graduate studies and professor of Hebrew Bible and Old Testament at Baylor University. Um, so the NICOT series continues to replace. Uh, classic volumes and very well-reviewed volumes with new editions that reflect the latest scholarship. Now, for the really well-reviewed commentaries in this series, uh, they'll still be available through Erdman's, but um, they just kind of lifted out of the series. So there's kind of like a just like a I think it's like kind of like a generic gray cover to to volumes to older volumes, so you can still buy those. Uh, but it's but but it's technically replaced in in the NICOT series. All right, let's look at some new releases in biblical studies and theology. Some I've spent some time with, and some I haven't. So um, let's just go through them. So this one is called "Is God a Vindictive Bully?" This came out um, I don't know, maybe six months ago, something like that. Uh, "Is God a Vindictive Bully?" by Co Paul Copen. Subtitle, Reconciling Portrayals of God in the Old and New Testaments. So, about 10 years ago, I read a Paul Copen book called Is God a Moral Monster? And I loved it. It was part apologetics, part um, exegesis, part theology, and I just thought it was really well done. And this is kind of the follow-up to that. And uh, different topics, different uh, problem passages... 
and I have read maybe three or four chapters in this so far. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's it's excellent depth. I, I'd call it more mid-level. It's not introductory apologetics or exegesis. Um, but he is dealing with, you know, some skeptics and, and critics um, who are offering more, what we might say, advanced arguments. And so I, I appreciate the depth that he goes into to explain and defend scripture. So, so far, so good. I really like that one. This, oh, hang on a second. Picked the wrong book. Let's see here. Let's do this. Okay. All right. So this is the new release, newer release in the Studies in Christian Doctrine and Scripture series by Brandon D. Smith, and it's called The Trinity in the Book of Revelation, subtitle, Seeing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in John's Apocalypse. So it's a, a great subject. The first chapter is devoted to reading Scripture through a Trinitarian lens, or I think he says a Trinitarian approach, if I remember correctly. And then there's a chapter on the Father in Revelation, a chapter on the Son in Revelation, a chapter on the Holy Spirit in Revelation. And then there's, there's a few other sections too, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the heart of the book. So um, this looks to, like a great series. I think it's still pretty new series from IVP, but, um, but, but um, volumes have been good so far. Um, Thomas Schreiner, some of you will know that name. Uh, he blurbs this book as does uh, Michael Bird, another name familiar in biblical studies and commentaries. So Brandon Smith is assistant professor of theology and New Testament at Cedarville. So there it is, the Trinity in the book of Revelation. All right, next let's go to the, let's, I'm just picking these based on what, what's not going to make my books fall down. There we go. Okay. All right. This is the latest release in the New Studies in Biblical Theology series, also from IVP. And remember that this, this is one's edited by D.A. Carson. So this one is called The Royal Priest, Psalm 110 in Biblical Theology by Matthew Amadi, who is a pastor in Utah. And um, so what he does in this book is obviously a, a kind of a biblical a Bible study on Psalm 110 throughout Scripture. So he talks about priests in Genesis and then in the law. And of course, he spends a lot of time with Psalm 110. But then he talks about Psalm 110 in the New Testament. And so there's chapters about Psalm 110 in um, Mark, I think it is, and then also a more extensive treatment of Psalm 110 in the book of Hebrews. So, um, I have not spent much time with this, but uh, it looks like a great addition to this New Studies in Biblical Theology series. Okay. This actually, now I'm kind of wondering if this is a new release. This is new to me. Now I'm kind of second guessing if this is a new release or not. Okay, definitely not a new release. But anyway, this book is new to me, published in 2012. So it's new release if we, if we count, if that if 11 years is considered a new release, then we'll count this as a new release. What really intrigued me about this book, maybe you're already familiar with it, you can let me know if you've read it before, is, is really the subtitle. So the title is Inerrancy in the Gospels. The subtitle is A God-Centered Approach to the Challenges of Harmonization. And uh, last year in my church, I taught an eight-week series looking at passages, looking at the resurrection passages in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you've ever done that before, studied them or taught them or preached them back to back to back to back, um, you know that you need to do some harmonization, or you know, I felt led to lead some discussions on harmonization and do, do some deep dives into harmonization to kind of put the narrative um, all together and united. So, uh, so anyway, that's this. That's why that's why this book kind of captured my attention. A God-centered approach to the challenges of harmonization. Uh, Daryl Bach. Some of you will know that name. John Frame. Some of you will know that that name. They both uh, blurb this book, and this is from Crossway. And apparently, it is eleven years old. So next, James Hamilton has written this book called Typology, subtitle, Understanding the Bible's Promise, promise 
shaped patterns. See that? Promise shaped patterns. How Old Testament expectations are fulfilled in Christ. So, James Hamilton, some will remember that he wrote the Revelation volume in the Preaching the Word series and the Psalms, two volumes on Psalms in the Evangelical Biblical Theology series, something like that. Uh, I think I was close anyway. All right, so this one is called, this is from Zondervan, this is called uh, Typology, and it's about types. Uh, if anybody, I think this might be the biggest book on on types, just understanding types, like a kind of a, a you know, a, a hermeneutical approach to understanding types, how to recognize, how to identify them, how to interpret them, how to apply them. This this might be the longest book I've seen on on types. It's 400 pages. Let me know if you know of a longer book than that. But um, and so um, the book is divided into different sections. So he spends time talking about certain Old Testament types, um, Adam, Moses, or individuals. I mean, Adam, Moses, and then Old Testament events, uh, creation, and the Exodus. And he talks about. Um, their fulfillment, their New Testament fulfillment, and just how to identify types, read types, uh, boundaries with types. I'm not sure if he uses that word, um, but I'm kind of using that word. Some authors and commentators and pastors have sometimes been accused of seeing too many types in Scripture, <laughs> and so a conversation about kind of boundaries with types um, is appropriate in order to avoid reading into the text, in order to avoid eisegesis. All right, uh, the next two are 40 questions from the 40 questions series. Let's see, there we go. Uh, one, of the, one of my left hand is on prayer, and one of my right hand is on the text and canon of the New Testament. So the one on prayer has, I, I really like the questions that the author came up with. Um, can you argue with God in prayer? Um, does our physical posture when praying, like how does that relate to praying, our actual physical posture? Um, th the first 10 chapters of the show are devoted to the theology of prayer. So uh, he does he does start there, but it's 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 some of sometimes it's the more um, inter sometimes what's more interesting in this forty question series is questions I hadn't thought of before, I hadn't heard of before. That those really kind of capture my attention when I'm looking through the table of contents. So Joseph Herod is the author of the prayer forty questions on prayer, and he is assistant professor of biblical spirituality at uh, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. All right, and then text and canon. So, uh, chapters in this book would include questions about scribes, questions about variants, questions about what we might call um, debated passages, like the final passage in the Gospel of Mark. And Charles Quarles, uh, actually, I think Charles Quarles and L. Scott Kellum, they're, they're both at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. All right. And then we have, let's see, we got three more. This one is called 50 Ethical Questions, Biblical Wisdom for Confusing Times by J. Allen Branch. Um, the question, 50 different questions. So the questions, um, and the book is 250 pages. So you can tell it's a couple, couple of pages per, per question. Um, a lot about marriage, a lot about uh, sexuality and gender, um, which that's that makes sense because those are a lot you know key questions being asked by um, being asked today. Um, morality, questions related to bioethics, um, questions related to Christian living, like gambling, profanity, racism. So there's a couple of questions in here that kind of piqued my interest. So I was glad to get this book. This is from Lexham Press. And Alan Branch is professor of Christian ethics at Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Kansas City. All right, last two here are hardbacks. The first one is from Simon Gathercole. It's called The Gospel and the Gospels, subtitle Christian Proclamation and Early Jesus Books. Some of you might be familiar with Simon Gathercole. He's written some other books in the area of of uh, Christology. This one is an examination of um, the biblical gospels and also non-biblical gospels. 
and he analyzes them and kind of the conclusion is he's showing the the uniqueness of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So um, this book is 575 pages and Simon Gathercole is professor of New Testament and early Christianity at uh, the University of Cambridge. So this is definitely going to be advanced mid-level, um, probably ideal for seminary reading or for pastors who are just interested in, in the topic or anyone interested in the topic of the uniqueness of the, uniqueness of the four New Testament Gospels compared to other Gospels from the time period. The last one is called Reenchanting Humanity by Owen, I think it's Stray, Straken, I think it is. Stray can. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but a uh, wonderful book. It's called Reenchanting Humanity, a Theology of Mankind, so a biblical anthropology. Uh, it's part of the mentor series from Christian Focus Publishing, even though it's kind of a bigger hardback, I would describe it as um, uh, introductory, but 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 definitely not superficial. So I think that a layperson would be fine reading this. I can I read the section on uh, sexuality recently uh, for some teaching I was doing, and um, it's just excellent. Um, it's it's in depth, but. Uh, Straken is a, a good, clear writer and very easy to understand. So different chapters are image, as in the image of God, depravity, work, sexuality, race and ethnicity, technology, justice, contingency, and Christ. So I read the chapter on, on sexuality to this point, which is about 60 pages. So, uh, oh, and this is uh, f about 420 pages in length. So I heard him speak on re recently on on something on YouTube, and um, uh, really well done. I'm not that familiar with him, but I am getting more familiar with him. And he is associate professor of Christian theology at uh, Grace Bible Theological Seminary in Arkansas. So there we go: ten new releases in biblical studies and theology, and two new commentaries. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.